Many anglers dream of going to Canada to experience the amazing scenery and to capitalize on world-class fishing opportunities. These once-in-a-lifetime adventures have the potential to produce the biggest fish some anglers will ever catch in one of the most scenic places on Earth. The Angling Edge staff, well, we're no different. Every year we dream about the next adventure north to Canada in search of trophy fish. On today's show, Jeremy Smith and Jeff Simpson ventured to Lawrence Bay Lodge on Reindeer Lake in Saskatchewan, a place well known for raising monster fish, especially world-class northern pike and fast-action lake trout to boot. Huh? Oh, the muskie would be happy to catch that baby, We'd huh? be happy to catch that one. <laughs> Man, I just absolutely love coming on these trips with you, Jer. Just a, a great opportunity to just tag into some big pike. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. There we go, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. All right. It's cool. I saw him follow and threw right back on him. Bang. Bingo, bango. Woo. First spot of the morning. Jeff and I are on a sweet trip to northern Saskatchewan. Lawrence Bay Lodge famed Reindeer Lake, maybe one of the best pike fisheries on planet Earth. And our first spot of the morning, we got a little taste of what the place has to offer. Woohoo! Sweet. Look at how fat that thing is. It's amazingly fat. Cool. Way to go, dude. Way to go, dude. <laughs> that's awesome. I just saw him follow, and that's the nice thing about fish up here. They just have not seen lures, so you throw something back at them. Bam! Sweet. I'll show you this guy. You get a lot bigger than this, but look at the belly. Just look at the belly on that thing. That is insane. It's fall time, so there's fish moving up. Jeff and I and a number of buddies decided to come up here on a dream trip, driving our boats to a fly-in destination in hopes of targeting giant pike like this. And then maybe if we get lucky, the lake trout will be spawning by the end of the trip. So we'll get to catch trout shallow, big pike shallow, which should be awesome. Mr. Pike, see ya. Located in Northern Saskatchewan, Lawrence Bay Lodge on Reindeer Lake offers some of the best trophy northern pike fishing in Saskatchewan, and at approximately 100 miles long and in some places 60 miles wide, it's considered one of the top northern pike lakes in the world. Thousands of islands and miles of shoreline create a seemingly endless number of bays where giant northern pike reside. Because the lake is so far north, with an average depth of around 100 feet, the water stays cool and the big pike remain relatively shallow all season long. Yeah, nice one. Nice, nice one. one. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. This is action packed. I totally just hosed Jeff over. You gotta remember to bring extra pliers on trips like this. Cause Jeff was just taking one off, basically a double. Drop the pliers in the lake. <laughs> so rather than help him get the pliers, I decided to cast and caught another one. That's the bait I've been using. We've got a number of different uh, baits on board. Of course we packed for everything, but sometimes just the simplest things are what you need. I'll show you this fish. And I'll show you a list of the type of gear that you want to have for a fly-in trip like this to the northern part of the world, northern Canada, Saskatchewan, for big northern pike and some lake trout. Look at that. Another beauty. Another just spectacular fish. Man, oh man, this is awesome. All right, I'll let you go. Hopefully catch another one. And All right, what a great fish. You know, you don't need a ton of baits for a trip like this, but you do need to have the right categories of baits. So check out what we brought for a trip like this to the far north in the fall. Big pike have many great qualities, but the fact that they're often in a very aggressive mood, willing to bite just about anything that passes in front of them, 
That's one of our favorite qualities. An all-around big fish producer is the size 12 X-Wrap. It's a Radican suspense. When they're digging a jerkbait bite, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better option. If pike happen to be scattered or you need to cover a lot of water, be sure to bring some size 7 ripping wraps, spinners, and spoons. Plastics are one of the best because of their versatility. We always pack 5 to 7 inch swim baits, minnow profiles, and tubes on these trips. To rig them, we'll have both the heavy duty and HD weighted willow swim bait hooks from 6 aught all the way up to 11 aught depending on the size of the plastics. For jigs, we have the VMC Boxer and Flat Shad jigs from 3 8 to 1 ounce. On this trip, the combo of a half ounce flat shad jig with a 6 inch big bite tube was simply magical. This presentation slithers through the cabbage beds and is so simple to fish. It's become one of our go-to rigs for Big Pike of the North. Oh, geez, that's Ooh. decent. Oh, cool. cool. That was cool. They ate it right at the boat. Yeah. Wow, that's the fun part. It's almost like muskies, <laughs> mini muskie fishing. The bait was gone, and now it looks like he just nipped it, but he swallowed <laughs> that whole thing. That was sweet. It was a good show from this angle, Jerry. Yeah, too. that was pretty fun. Man, oh man. Right now I'm throwing an X wrap. We're mixing it up with different things. And we're using a lot of basically bass gear. You know, flipping sticks, fishing a lot of 7.4 heavy fast, power and action rods. Nice little pike, catching tons of these guys. I'm gonna get them back. One of the cool things that's happened recently here that unfortunately we were not able to get our hands on, but St. Croix Legend Tournament Series, they released a line of rods specifically for northern pike fishing. So for those enthusiasts that love coming up north like this, now we've got rods that are specifically designed for that. But if you don't want to get a pike specific rod, you know, really just bass gear is what you need for, for fishing these pike up here. 7.4, 7.6, seven, seven, medium, heavy fast, or a heavy fast is, is what you want for this deal. Ooh, big one, big one. Ooh, big one. So that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. We are loaded for bear. We got. You know, there's so in. many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rides on a planet. Sure looked like it by the boil anyway. Got ourselves a double jerk. It's a double. You got a big one, Jeff? Yeah. Two big ones? Yeah. Yes. Double Bs. Wow. Wow. Sweet. <laughs> Ooh, they're going to kiss. Huh? They are. <laughs> now Look what at we... this. This is what we're talking about. Now what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> These are great problems to have. <laughs> right. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Get them next to each other. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Oh man, is that cool. I hate to say it, Jerry, but mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> that is absolutely what you come up here for. I mean, it's just, it's just such an incredible experience to be able to catch big fish like this so consistently. Those, those boy, boys were swimming together, huh? Yeah, they were. Okay. Bad, and you gotta be able to get in there. He cooked out, there it is. But I love having fish grippers on board. It's just a great way to lean the fish up against the, the boat. And he can get his jaws open. A jaw spreader is great, of course. But man, that's a great double, huh? Unbelievable. I'll get him back and I'll just show you the tools that I've got in the deck to safely handle this pike. So here's a few of the tools that you've got to have on board. A fish gripper, like I said, is nice just to get your hands away from the fish. And speaking of keeping your hands away from the fish and treble hooks, this is hands down my favorite tool to have on boat. This is a hook extractor. So you can see that the, the hook, what you do is you end up reaching down, you grab the hook here and I pull back and you get a good strong grip on the hook. So you can unhook fish by keeping your hands far away from those toothy critters that often have treble hooks. Of course, I like carrying a, a longer pair of pliers as well. So fish grippers in this. And then I, I never, ever, ever go fishing for big fish with big lures without a good pair of bolt cutters. So 
not only to keep the fish healthy, but if somebody does happen to get hooked or go through clothing or whatever, this is, uh, when you're this far north, not having these is a bad deal. You gotta have them. So having just those little things on the deck make dealing with pike up here a heck of a lot easier. Oh, he's taking off. Whoa, baby. He wants to go. He wants to go. Notice we brought the big musky net because we were planning on catching fish the size of muskies and we're doing exactly that. <laughs> Couple of optimists. <laughs> That's awesome. But it is nice for just keeping them too. Yeah. Well, that's a nice fish, man. Woo, baby. Whoa. Capers. Cool. Just whaling on tanks today, buddy. Whoa. Holy I cow, like this that. is insanity. Uh -huh. This is totally crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a great fish. Great fish. Great fish. <laughs> They're so pretty. I like them. Here, I'm gonna get this thing back here quick. It's like. <sighs> cool, you know. Jerry and I, like he mentioned, we've both been up here a couple of times and well, you get up here in your own boat, Jerry brought his own boat this time and you look at the lake on the map and you see the spots, once you get on this body of water, it is massive. And then you go in the bays and bays and there's actually, the way we kind of break it down is we consider each spot, we go into an area and you kind of have to forget how vast it is and just fish the spots that look good. And, each little area becomes kind of its own lake, you know, so it's very massive and expansive, but if you just kind of look at the spots, break it down, boy, the fish are there, sometimes by the dozens. One of the pieces of technology that is so important to have, especially if you're coming out here without a guide, you might be using a camp boat or whatever to go out after dinner, is bring some type of a GPS system. So right now we've got the Humminbird Solix units, but up, you know, a little Helix Ice 5 or something like that. Having a base map will help you safely navigate. But the thing we really like about this is we've been using the Auto Chart Live, of course, saving all of our tracks for navigation. But the Auto Chart Live has been great for a few spots that we like. We drive around it, you fish it a couple times, and all of a sudden it's just like having the great Lake Master technology in the boat. These spots show up where the finger is, where the inside corner is, where the top and, and, the, and the drops are on it. So Auto Chart Live paints a really nice map of how the spots lay out, and it's definitely sure. something that's helped us catch more fish on this trip. Yeah. Just when I pulled back on it, it sure seemed. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drag. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. It's basically everything that we picked up we've had success with, but plastic seem to be number one, followed by hard baits. Ooh, that's a thick one, Jer. Yes. I was going to say not as big as mine, but I think it is. <laughs> nice, that nice is job. outstanding, yeah. Okay, there we go. Came on what is, well, it's definitely my favorite lure of all time for just catching everything. Number 12 x trap in this particular case, but the x trap catches everything. I'll show you this guy and I'll kind of show you the line and the leader setup we've got. We're doing this. There we go. Another great fish, huh? It's just these things are one after the other. I mean, it's just, this is the most insane fishing. This is such a cool experience. You can't believe how many fish like this are up here. It just is mind blowing. All right. So I'm fishing kind of a mix of line. It's all braid. I didn't bring any, any lines up here that weren't spooled with braid. For a lot of the pike fishing, I'm using 40 pound either. Suffix 131, some cases I've got 832 and even the, uh, the Pro Mix braid on there. But does the job for a lot of things. And then just a little shank of wire to whatever bait that you're fishing is is all you need. This happens to be a single strand titanium, but for doing this uh, pike fishing up north here and also a little lake trout fishing, I, I really like having a bigger reel. So we're using a couple reels, but the one I keep coming back to is this Daiwa Tatula 300. It's a, it's a bigger frame, but it's still low profile. It's got a lot of line capacity, and then it's got the big, with their 110 millimeter paddle handles. And I like the paddles for doing this, especially if you're jerkbait fishing or you're doing a lot of pull pause stuff. Rather than having the big single knob cranking handle, it's just easier to find your center, find where the reel's at. It's got the T-wing system. Check this out, I'll show you. So this aperture opens up, 
and it lets the line move more freely on the cast. Really helps with casting distance, accuracy. It's also nice when you're lake trout fishing when that thing opens up, it lets your jig fall a little faster to some of those, some of those deeper lake trout. Of course, it's got a smooth drag, so having a, you know, a size 300 like this is, to me, an absolute must Good have one. when you're up here fishing for Ooh. big pike. That was cool, ate it right by the boat. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? There we go. Whoa, I haven't got a good look at it yet, but it sure looked nice. Sure looks good. Not a huge one, I thought it was way bigger, but it's very nice. Very nice fish. Oh, and it's kind of amazing how the guides up here, you'll fish a spot and then they'll go right back through it and you'll think, well, we must have caught everything, but there can be so many fish in these spots, it pays to fish them really, really slow and there's a reason those guys come back through time and time again because there's just so many fish in spots at times. It's amazing the concentration of big fish. Oh, beautiful, beautiful Jackson. You gonna take off, buddy? Man, see ya. And one of the things that kind of prompted us to drive over 30 hours in the middle of the wilderness was having the technology to fish in weather like this. And so having a trolling motor up here to me is just, I mean, that's a game changer, right? And if you've got somebody that's operating the boat, they can put you on spots and, and run the big motor. But if you want to fish and run the boat, having a trolling motor is huge. And the spot lock has just been amazing. We've been able to just pin in a spot here, fan cast and just fish after fish after fish after fish. I mean, it really does change everything when you have technology like this on board. It's amazing. Good job yes. to you, Jer. Huh? You just feel like the greatest fisherman in the world. It's so easy. So easy. If you want to catch big fish, Jeff, I mean, where else can you just come? You can't catch big muskies in any numbers. Okay, okay. baby. Wow, they got such cool yellow to them. Oh, that's cool. This wants to come in right there. Yes, Woo! yes, yes, yes. Pretty fish, Jer. Congratulations, my man. Mr. Yep, Smith. Hey. Huh? <laughs> if that was a muskie, we'd be happy to catch that baby. We'd huh? be happy to catch that one. <laughs> man, I just absolutely love coming on these trips with you, Jer. Just a, a great opportunity to just tag into some big pike. It's, it's an amazing place. I mean, this is a trip we've been planning for four years. Big shout out to Phil at Lawrence Bay Lodge for letting us make this dream come true. It's been absolutely world class fishing for northern pike. And of course, the lake trout action has just been nonstop. Same deal. Love awesome. It. What a love trip, it, Jer. It. Woo. You know, when I do these closes, it's usually about something personal and something that I believe the Lord has done in my life. And, uh, and what I'm going to share with you today, I was really torn. Lord, do I really have to share this? You know, this is really special to me. And uh, I was torn. Yes, no, yes, no. And it's like the Spirit of God said, you need to share it because a lot of people are dealing with issues like this and need to hear this from you. A lot of you know that my wife has dealt with a lot of health issues over the years. Well, she went home to be with Jesus, went to heaven about 11 months ago now. The last six weeks were tough, toughest six weeks of my life. We were at Abbott Heart Hospital in Minneapolis, and she was in the intensive care unit. Over the years, she had three valve replacements. She was diabetic, uh, a lot of other issues. And uh, the heart was wearing out again. We had valve problems. There was a lot of things they couldn't do, you, you know, and uh, she started to get really sick really fast. Like I said, I was down there 24 seven with, with her during the COVID crisis. They did let me stay in the hospital from seven in the morning until late at night with her. And then I had to leave. But it was a, a, a one day after the other, after the other things, the doctors were trying everything on that you can imagine. And uh, uh, after very near the end of almost like five weeks in there, they wanted to try one more test and she did not want to do this. She was already on pain pills, 
uh, are sleeping about 22 hours a day, very distant much of the time. And uh, uh, at one point, just days be before she went home, she looked at me matter-of-factly. There was a test that we were supposed to do the next morning. She looked at me and said, honey, I can't do this no more. I want to go home to be with Jesus. Take me home so I can go home. Take me out of here, I want to go to my house. When she said that to me, what I heard in my heart from the Spirit of God is, Al, it's time. I'm coming to get her, and you got to let her go. Al, it's time. I'm coming to get her, and you got to let her go. At that moment, my prayer went from believing for a miracle, which we've seen so many times in her life over the years. It just went like this. Lord, make it quick and easy. It was days later. She was in our home. Here, I was holding her hand on one side. My boys were holding her hand on the other. When her spirit left her body, she went to heaven. The peace that I have after that took a little bit of time. You can imagine what you went through. But I know and I believe in my heart what the Word of God says, that I will see her again. She's in a new body, a healthy body, living a good life, dancing in the streets of gold in heaven. I believe that with all my heart and that I will see her again. That gives me the peace that surpasses all understanding. And there's a peace that I could deal with any, anything now. Am I still adjusting? Yeah, there's days and things that I adjust to. That's going to go on, on for some time yet. But, but I dealt with it when I seen what had happened. When she was ready, she was ready, everything just flipped over. And God just, it was a beautiful exit from body into the spirit world to heaven. And brings, that brings me peace that surpasses all understanding. Some of you right now are dealing with similar situations like this. I hope this helps you. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, have a great fishing season. We'll see you in the water.